Who's the best young point guard in the league? Chris Paul or Darren Williams? This was a question that was very common back in the late 2000s. While CP3 always had the upper hand statistically, Darren would always outplay him whenever they matched up against each other. In their head-to-head -head matchups, Darren shot the ball way better and has a 17-8 career record over CP3. Combine that with Darren having more playoff success during his days in Utah, the discussion of who's better became a real debate. How's it going fellas, my name's Andy, and today we're going to take a look at the tragic downfall of the once great Darren Williams. But before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an app that aggregates ticket prices from all over the web to help you find the best deals for games, concerts, Broadway shows, and other events. The prices marked in green are good, while the ones in red are bad. I've used the app to buy tickets before, and the process was very smooth. They also just launched the Daily Tab, where they are giving away thousands of dollars in tickets and discounts to events like the Jonas Brothers, Post Malone, and more. It's completely free, you can enter every day, and it's as easy as tapping a button to enter. You're basically giving away the chance to win free tickets by not entering every day. So download the app, use my code ANDY for $20 off, and don't forget to enter the daily tap. Continuing with the CP3 vs D-Will debate, one side would argue that Darren was drafted into a great system with a great head coach, so he had the advantage. But the Jazz only won 26 games before he got there. It was Darren's talent that brought them over the hump and helped them become a perennial 50-plus win team. Both of them improved their team a lot, and that's why the comparisons were there. In their second seasons in the league, CP3 led the Hornets to 39 wins and missed the playoffs. But Darren led the team to 51 wins and the Western Conference Finals in one of the most brutal conferences in NBA history. On top of that, he was absurd in that series against the Spurs, averaging 26-8 and on great efficiency. Remember, the Spurs were the second best defensive team in the league that year. So Darren performing the way he did for a second year player was insane. Even though the Jazz would still lose in 5 games, the future was looking bright. Unfortunately, as the years progressed, Darren would never reach the same success again. It was just really difficult for them to get past the Lakers. For the next 3 seasons, him and the Jazz would get eliminated by the Lakers 3 straight times. Darren and the team were still really good, it's just that they could never get over that hump. It's reasonable though, they were going up against Kobe and the Lakers who were dominating that era. The Western Conference as a whole was very tough. There were so many good teams, so many good players. Darren averaged 19 and 11 for 2 straight years on a great team and couldn't even make the All-Star team. Regardless, he continued to get better. Over the years, he became known for his devastating crossover pull-up and his explosiveness using his strength and speed to get to the rim. Darren was always known as a great passer out of the pick and rolls too. Pick and rolls were a huge part of the Jazz offense, they were doing it way more than most other teams. And with a great passer like Darren, and great big men like Carlos Boozer and Mehmet Okor, the Jazz were always at the top of the league in offensive efficiency. Boozer was very versatile and very good at rolling to the rim, while Okor was a great shooter, and probably the first stretch 5 we've ever seen in the modern NBA. Plus, you add on Andre Kirilenko, who was the most underrated defender of all time, and a young Paul Millsap off the bench. Overall, the Jazz were a great team. But after 5.5 seasons in Utah, things started to get a bit shaky. By the 2010-11 season, Jerry Sloan has been the coach for the Jazz for over 20 years and it was reported that Darren basically caused him to retire. In a regular season game, around halftime, Sloan realized that Darren was freelancing with the ball way too much and not following their playbook. Sloan then told him something along the lines of, Hey, if you're going to change the play, it would be nice if you let the rest of the team know so we have a chance to score. Darren responded simply with, My bad. But according to Raja Bell, who was on the team at the time, he gave a much more detailed explanation of what happened. I'll link the source in the description so you can read the whole thing if you want. But basically, Darren and Jerry Sloan continued to yell at each other in the hallway about how they want to run the game. Darren wanted more freedom in the offense, but Sloan wanted to continue to run their set plays. He was fine with him changing up the play, but he had to let his teammates know and tell them about it or else it would just be a dead possession. Then for the entire second half of the game, they just didn't talk to each other. It was very awkward. They were playing against the Bulls and they lost. 
After the game is over, usually the team comes together in the locker room and does their usual chant of 1-2-3 Jazz. But instead, this time, Sloan said 1-2-3 Good Luck. Raja Bell said that everyone was like, what the hell? Then the next morning, Sloan announced his retirement and quit. A couple weeks later, and Darren got traded to the New Jersey Nets. Yeah, it was a pretty bad situation, and a lot of Jazz fans still dislike him for forcing Sloan out of town. In a matter of just one month, the Jazz went from a dark horse contender to losing their franchise coach and their star point guard. As for Darren Williams, the next two seasons with the Nets were rough. He got what he wanted, more freedom in the offense, more control, more time to do whatever he wants, but it was obvious that his game started to slowly get worse. He was only 26 years old when he got to the Nets, but his athleticism, his shooting, his quickness, they all started to decline. And part of it was because he was not in great shape. He also got surgery on his right wrist, which played a part in his poor shooting percentages. In the 2011-12 season, he put up some good numbers, but the Nets were still awful because of all the injuries. The following season was a lot better. The Nets relocated to Brooklyn, they got Joe Johnson in a trade, and Brooke Lopez was actually healthy for the entire season. They won 49 games, but unfortunately, they lost in the first round to the Bulls. It was a pretty big upset. The Bulls did not have Derrick Rose, and instead, this was the year that Nate Robinson just went off. The next season saw another big trade, with KG and Pierce coming to Brooklyn, but this quote, super team was way too old to do anything. Darren's individual play also continued to get worse, and by the age of 28, he was no longer the superstar point guard like before. Instead, he was basically a role player now. He spent his next few seasons in Dallas and finished his career with his worst playoff series ever. In the 2017 finals, as a member of the Cavs, Darren barely played, and when he did play, he was awful. In the 5 game series, he shot 2 for 16, and he became a joke. Even his own teammate Richard Jefferson said that the Warriors' eyes lit up whenever Darren entered the game. The once dominant point guard was not even taken seriously anymore. That was his last year in the NBA. At the age of 32, he was gone. He finished his career as a 3-time All-Star and 2-time All-NBA, which I was honestly surprised to see. I thought he would have more, but I guess playing in the West really hurt him. He was competing with a lot of other great guards back then too. On the other hand, Chris Paul, his counterpart, and the guy he once battled with for the title of best point guard is still going strong. It's amazing how different their careers played out, but in some aspects, it wasn't surprising. Darren never had the same motivation to continue playing basketball. In fact, he cared more about MMA. He owns an MMA gym and grew up as a wrestler. It was something he wanted to try out professionally, and it seems like nowadays he's more interested in that than ever returning to the NBA courts. The career of Darren Williams ended in unspectacular fashion. A combination of ankle injuries and his diminishing athleticism were the main causes for his downfall. That and because he never seemed that motivated to play. Back when he was in Brooklyn and that whole era where they were trying to form a super team, Darren was expected to be their best player and lead the way. However, according to Paul Pierce, it was the exact opposite. He said that his one year playing in Brooklyn was horrible. He stated, it was just the guys' attitudes there. It wasn't like we were surrounded by a bunch of young guys. They were vets who didn't want to play and didn't want to practice. Regarding Darren Williams, Pierce stated, Before I got there, I looked at Darren as an MVP candidate. But I felt once we got there, that's not what he wanted to be. He just didn't want that. I think a lot of the pressure got to him sometimes. This was his first time in the national spotlight. The media in Utah is not the same as the media in New York, so that can wear on some people. I think it really affected him. With that being said, I think at some points of Darren's career, he might have been a bit overrated. He was excellent in his days with Utah, but that was mainly because Jerry Sloan was a magnificent coach, who always put his point guard in the right spots. The offensive system was very similar to what he ran with John Stockton and Carl Malone in the 90s. Darren had the ball in his hands a lot, and with players who could space the floor and finish pick and rolls well, it made it a lot easier for him to find the open man. However, it was completely different in Brooklyn, and he got kind of exposed. And along with his lack of motivation, his game slowly started to go downhill. 
And that's all folks, that was the story of the tragic downfall of Darren Williams. In my opinion, he's one of the greatest players to have never reached his full potential. Whether it was a personality thing, or maybe he just didn't like basketball that much. But there's no denying that he was a natural talent. It's sad to see him go out like that. What's your favorite memory of him? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.